Welcome to In the Desert of Set, a pagan and occult website by G.B. Marion. I'm G.B. Marion. I write about life as a polytheist in contemporary times with random, long-winded detours into ancient history, classic horror movies, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Won't you join me for today's adventure? If you'd like to read a free electronic print copy of the following recording, please visit desertofset.com. To wear it, or when God is a hippopotamus. To wear it is the Egyptian hippo goddess of childbirth. Her name means Great Female, and she is otherwise known as Ta'urt, Reret, Apet, or Thoeris. According to some accounts, she was originally the female counterpart of Apep, the Chaos Serpent. But she became a goddess and a defender of Ma'at. Now, along with her trusty sidekick, the benevolent demon Bess, Ta'urt protects the frightened and the vulnerable. As frightening as all the cliffeth of the void might be, they are frightened of to wear it, and for good reason. Her sacred animal is one of the deadliest creatures on earth, and she is the only other nature or Egyptian divinity who is powerful enough to wield Kepesh, the celestial iron of Set. Hippos are Typhonian animals, which means there's a very strong connection between to wear it and Set. While male hippos were feared, females were celebrated for their ferocity in protecting their young. The Egyptians channeled this ferocity by invoking to wear it for protection, especially when it came to mothers and little children. Midwives commonly used hippo statuettes to instill to wear its strength in women who were giving birth. People kept her image around their homes because it made them feel safe in a world of terror and chaos with no hospitals or public health system as we understand such things today. People generally don't behave that way toward influences they think are ugly or disturbing, so clearly the sight of Tawarit inspired confidence. Despite her so-called demonic appearance, the great female is there to defend the defenseless. Tawarit never had any temples or priesthoods of her own, that we presently know of at least, Hers was a purely folk tradition, kept alive by Egyptian peasants in their own homes. This is ironic, given that to where it is also linked with one of the largest and most important constellations in the northern sky. The Egyptians viewed Draco not as a dragon, but as a great big hippo with a crocodile on her back. In funerary art, this hippo was shown with sagging breasts that are heavy with milk. She holds a chain by which the Big Dipper is tethered to Polaris, the North Star, to where it is said to keep the Dipper restrained to prevent Set from completely destroying the universe whenever he becomes too angry. She is helped in this regard by the four sons of Horus, Duamuteth, Hapi, Imseti, and Kebshenuf. The great female was eventually recast as an alternate form of Isis, the sister-wife of Osiris, but I disagree with this conflation myself. Isis is linked to Sirius and the Sothic cycle, not to Draco or the circumpolar stars, and the Isian religion is known for having absorbed virtually every other goddess religion it encountered in late antiquity, including the cults of Aphrodite, Demeter, and Diana. But most importantly to me, to wear it is a so-called monstrous divinity who was born of chaos and who exhibits chaotic traits, yet who uses her chaotic powers to defend the cosmic order, not to uncreate it as Apep seeks to do. She trades in an altogether different, more primeval kind of fertility than Isis does. The Egyptian gods are kind of like Voltron or the Megazord, They can converge in various formations and become composite deities, and this includes Tawarit and Isis as much as the rest. 
But this is not the same thing as saying Tweret is simply a different version of Isis. Many goddesses are portrayed as beautiful, slender-bodied women, but Tweret has always been depicted as rotund, with a gaping mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. She certainly isn't the sort of glamour girl one normally finds in pinup magazines, and I absolutely love her for this. Not that I have anything against the more glamorous goddesses, of course. Remember, I revere Ishtar, too. Our patriarchal society pretends to love women, but continues to shame them for not keeping fit, wearing makeup, shaving their armpits, or bearing children. There is nothing wrong with doing either of these things so long as it is your choice, just like there is nothing wrong with wearing a skirt or a hijab, again, so long as it is your choice. But the expectation that every woman must fit some kind of mold is not only misogynist, it goes against nature, as holy figures like to wear it are here to remind us. By the time the Greek writer Plutarch came along, circa 46 through 120 CE, to offer his version of events, to where its story had been changed so that she was a concubine of Set who abandoned him after the killing of Osiris. This change was probably the result of Set's demonization in late antiquity, when he was conflated with the Chaos Serpent and blamed for Egypt's fall to foreign rule. I think Tweret is still one of Set's many romantic partners, but she also acts as a kind of buffer between him and the other Necheru, restraining Set when he loses his self-restraint. A lady who's not afraid to smack Big Red around with his own iron genitals whenever she thinks he's being an asshole? How can such a female be regarded with anything but boundless awe? To where it also resembles Big Red in that she seems to have identified more with the little people who didn't benefit as much from pharaonic privilege. The peasants knew she would always listen to them, even if the more important gods of the pharaohs and the priesthoods didn't. In Typhonian Thalamic lore, it is said that Set is the male offspring or avatar of Typhon, whom Kenneth Grant depicts as a Saurian mother goddess associated with Draco. Grant further claimed that Typhon's worship was suppressed by later patriarchal religions. As far as I can tell, there is no historical evidence to support either of these claims, which Grant appears to have drawn from the poet Gerald Massey, who was not an Egyptologist. But I do agree with Massey and Grant that Set's worship is linked to that of a so-called monstrous female divinity who resonates with Draco and who was ignored by the pharaohs for some reason. I just think the entity they were describing is actually to wear it. I think of Draco and the Big Dipper as being at the center of heaven. Being circumpolar, they never descend beneath the horizon, which is why the ancient Egyptians called them the imperishable ones. Unlike the planets and the constellations of the zodiac, the circumpolar stars can be seen on any night at any time of the year, in the northern hemisphere at least, and weather permitting. Since Draco and the Dipper are above the Zodiac, I think of Tewaret and Set as being older and darker than any of the various planetary divinities, such as Marduk and Zeus for Jupiter, or Ishtar and Aphrodite for Venus, as well as divinities associated with Sirius and Orion, such as Isis and Osiris, respectively, which are beneath the Zodiac. Mind you, I am not asserting any of this to be a dogmatic fact. It's just the way I prefer to think about the gods based on their related stars. I also incorporated this theoretical cosmogony into episode 25 of this series, a would-be Ombite creation myth, with Set and Tewaret cast as the first Necheru to be born from Newt, or Mother Sky. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this sermon, and you'd like to read some more, please check out desertofset.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Set bless.